as you guys know, there is so much going on right now. Today we're going to look into the strategic petroleum reserves because as you've seen with the horrendous events over the last week, they have a sudden added significance and I really want to show you some stats and details about the SBRs. And as you know, I always tell you guys that there's the demand trends for all these central banks that are buying gold by the ton, buying gold by the ton. I'm going to show you how you can see it on some charts and I'm going to show you exactly what I'm talking about in case you want to fact check me. I'll show you some of the websites where you can see this information for yourself. And I know for a lot of you, this is maybe your first time here. My name is Peter Leeds. Welcome. And along with my entire team, we give you investment enlightenment, the things that you need to know so that you can make the best decisions, protect yourself financially, and protect the people that you care about. And as you know, that is much more important right now than it has ever been. Peter Leeds, Premium Investor Enlightenment. Avoid risks. Make profits quickly and easily. First, allow me to say that our hearts and thoughts are with all the innocent Palestinians and Israelis who are suffering during this absolutely horrendous situation in the Middle East. Besides the most terrible aspects of the recent events, there have been many other effects, and we do need to speak about those, because things like oil and gold and the stock market and the economy is what this channel is all about. But please understand that at no point have we forgotten about the things which really matter, the most serious aspects of this explosive conflict. So first, I'm going to take our conversation down a little bit of a lighter path. And then we're going to circle back to the Middle East because I have about 10 things I want to say about the issues going on there. First, we're going to start a little closer to home. This is from the Bay Area Times. Israel's shekel is down 2% to a 7-year low of 3.95%. PC shipments are down 8% in Q3 globally, with Apple leading with a drop of 23% in PC shipments. And I have a question for you. How much oil is in the SPRs? Here's a chart from Y Charts, and you'll see that there's right now about 351 million barrels in the Strategic Petroleum Reserves. And it started really drawing down in about October of 2021 from its high of about 600 million barrels. And then throughout 2022, the sales of the SPRs got more extreme, taking us all the way down about 40% from the previous high to about, as I said, 351 million barrels. And I always tell you that it's about the speed of the move more than the destination. That applies with the SPRs as well. You'll see that it was pretty consistent for a long time, and then it suddenly had a drawdown in a short window of time. And that's a relatively short window of time if you're talking about just over a year. And the thing is that the SBRs are for a time of war, a time of absolute utmost need. It was not meant to be used as a political tool to help people out when the price of gas gets a little bit pricey. And I admit it would have helped you pay less for gas, but it's more important to have a big backlog of oil just sitting there when you need it because there's a lot of uncertainty with oil supplies and we rely on oil so much. How much do we rely on it? We use about 20 million barrels, just over 20 million barrels a day, which means if all oil supplies were cut off, which is quite a leap, but it's a thought exercise, if all oil supplies were cut off and we had to live off of the SPRs, that would last us about 17 and a half days. Another thing I always tell you is that anything artificial is temporary. And when they artificially release the oil to get the prices down, as soon as they stop that, the prices go right back up, as you've seen. And with the conflicts in the Middle East right now, you see the big spike in oil prices. And you might say that doesn't make sense because it's not as though Israel or Palestine are major oil exporters, but it's a risk premium. There's a concern of the contagion. And we're going to get into that, as I said, a little bit later. It's all about supply risk and supply uncertainty. And that's what's going to push prices even more than would be called for. Overall, I am personally liking energy, the whole complex for investment opportunities. And I keep meaning to show you, I did have to sell a stock, a recent video I did where I thought this would be a mistake. And it turns out that it worked out relatively good. If you want to say avoiding a loss is relatively good. Here's a chart of PSX. I still like this company. I do want to get back into this company. But for now, it was overbought. RSI showed a reading of about 80, which was incredibly overbought, and then momentum started slowing, and that's how I knew to get out of the stock when I did. And this is what we talk about in the Peter Leeds charting course, if you want to learn about how to know where a stock's going to go based on the chart patterns that you see, and the technical indicators. 
You guys know that the Federal Reserve is trying to fight inflation by raising interest rates, making it harder for businesses and people to exist in this economy. But let me ask you, how many rate hikes have there been so far this year? There have been four so far, and there's maybe going to be another one. There's two more Fed meetings coming up. One's October 31st, November 1st. The next one is December 12th to the 13th. And then the second day of any of these meetings, they may raise rates. And the current thought is that the rates will probably have one more small rate hike this year, but not two, maybe a half a point. Either way, we're getting closer and closer to the time where what everyone's expecting is the Federal Reserve pivot, which will take a lot of pressure off individuals, consumers, and businesses. But I wanted to point out that the market is more about expectations than reality. That's why you see by the rumors sell the fact events. Everybody is expecting the Fed pivot. Some people are talking about interest rates going even higher or they're being raised more aggressively or are held higher for longer. Not now with all the geopolitical chaos that's going on all over the world. Not just in the Middle East. War breaking out in Kosovo. You got the South China Sea. Taiwan's in a little bit of issues now when we're looking at Ukraine and we're looking at Israel. It's a lot to take care of, a lot to oversee. China, if they're going to make a move on Taiwan, it's going to be more likely to be relatively soon than in the far distant future. And keep in mind that expectations happen first. So people are expecting the Fed pivot. They're all banking on it and thinking that that's going to lead to a runaway stock market. But that may be the point, and there's a lot of arguments for this, that may be the point where everything starts coming down. People are waiting for the Fed pivot, and when that happens, then it's like a buy the rumor, sell the fact event, and then it can be very potentially bad for the stock market. The Fed pivot would also lead to an even bigger inflationary bounce because it's an admission that they're not going to be fighting inflation as much, as aggressively. An admission that they haven't won that battle. And another effect would be that there would be a softening in the U.S. dollar. Here's a chart of the Dixie, the DXY. The U.S. dollar's strength in recent history has been extreme. A lot of it is because the U.S. dollar is the least smelly shirt in the dirty laundry pile. But a Fed pivot would put a lot of weakness into the U.S. dollar, which then makes things that you buy at the U.S. dollars seem to cost more. So coffee imports would cost more, for example. But a lot of this strength in the U.S. dollar also pulled gold or pushed gold prices lower. And imagine if the U.S. dollar hadn't strengthened so much in such a short window of time, gold prices would be doing even better than they have been doing in the very recent history. They've been doing poorly in recent history. Very recent, they finally, perhaps, turned the corner. Case in point, here's some charts. Newmont Mining is finally waking up after a long slide. Same with Barrick Gold, same with IM Gold. Avino Silver Mines, Hecla Mining, some of these stocks that we talk about in the Peter Leeds newsletter, link below. And I told you in the recent video that people usually sell at a bottom and they miss out on all of the gains. And I was saying that this is possibly the bottom for gold. And everyone's just capitulating, giving up, throwing the baby out with the bathwater. And they're just selling at what may be, when you look back a few months from now, may be the bottom. So have even more patience than you can stand. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> And I also tell you that oil is like a tax on everything. When the prices go higher, who doesn't use oil? No one doesn't use oil. Everybody uses oil. If you use plastics, if you go to work, if you buy a product that got shipped to you, everybody uses oil. So when the price of oil goes higher, the price of everything goes higher. More inflationary pressure. It's like a tax on everything, a tax on every company, on every person. But I also tell you about the central banks buying gold. This is from the World Gold Council. And if we want to go back a little bit to January, so quarter one, 2023, they got Singapore buying almost 69 tons, tons of gold. China by 57.8, Turkey by 30 tons, India, Philippines. You go to a little closer in history, quarter two, Poland by 48 tons, China 45 tons, Czech Republic 6 tons, Russia, Singapore. And for a long time now, it's very hard to find a quarterly period where the sales of gold were greater than the purchases. It's a burning demand trend that is going under the radar because gold's performing badly, but there is just a lot of demand for gold beyond any sales. 
you'll see that the buying and selling looks almost equivalent on every chart, but they are misleading because there may be a lot more buying and it's still gonna look like the selling's about equivalent if you just take a quick glimpse at it, but you'll see that this is a much bigger number than this, even though the amounts are appearing on the chart almost to be the same magnitude. And since we last had a conversation, a war in the Middle East has broken out and there's been a lot of immediate effects and there's gonna be a lot more follow-on effects, pretty significant ones, a lot more extreme than I think a lot of people are realizing right now. The stock market is definitely not factoring in the potential depth of this conflict. There's a massive likelihood of contagion, which we're gonna talk about in just a second. And at the same time, we gotta keep an eye on the South China Sea, of course, Ukraine and Russia, and there's a war possibly going to break out again in Kosovo. That's why I say if China were to invade Taiwan now, it'd be more difficult for us to react in the same way as we would have if we weren't distracted in many other directions. We've got fighter jets going into Italy. We've got a carrier group going towards Lebanon. And I'm the first person to doubt any public comments, but I do agree with the comments of the military has made that this move with the carrier group is more of a deterrent than anything. Why deterrent? Because there's Hezbollah, there's decisions or actions Hamas could take, there's Iran, and we're going to get into this because it's almost unlikely, unbelievable to think that Iran is not completely involved in this. And they even admit themselves that they are a backer of Hamas. And if Iran is involved, that suddenly puts every extreme reaction to an even more extreme reaction. If you think oil prices rose a lot because of the terrorist attack in Israel, just wait until Iran gets pulled into this or chooses to get pulled into this. When they come in with parasols, there's a very high likelihood that they had a lot of help or training from Iran. And there's questions about how they breached the border wall going into Israel when there's cameras, security measures everywhere, and they broke through in many locations. Everything is pointing to Iran's involvement. And then you have Lindsey Graham talking about striking Iran. And the thing is, whenever anything breaks out with Iran, militarily, the first thing they're going to do is shut the Strait of Hormuz, through which travels one-third of the entire world's natural gas and 25% of the world's oil. And when 25% of the oil were to get cut off, it doesn't increase in price by 25%. It'll increase in price by $100 a barrel. Now, Lebanon is one of the most densely populated places on the earth. And the fact that there's hostages in Lebanon changes the entire situation. There's a lot of people who live in Lebanon who are not terrorists, but there's a terrorist faction that is in charge of the country. Hamas is like their government, but just like people who live in North Korea are not evil. They live in a place where the regime that oversees them and controls them is evil. A few years after World War II is when the state of Israel was created. And then we saw the Yom Kippur War. That was before I was born by a couple of months. But to go into Lebanon to retrieve the hostages, which is what Hamas may have wanted to happen, is going to result in a lot of IDF casualties. That's the Israeli Defense Forces. There's going to be a lot of Hamas casualties, of course. There'll be a lot of collateral damage with a lot of deaths among innocent Lebanese people. But the reason that America is very worried about escalation is because, as I said, there's Hezbollah, and there's also Syria, there's Iran, and Russia is benefiting from all this because they export and sell more oil than any other nation in the entire world. So all of a sudden their resources are selling for more. All of this is leading to a risk premium, a flight to safety into things like bonds, gold, US dollar, risk off trade because of all the risks and uncertainties that are out there now. And where we're at now is a complete siege of Lebanon and a different attitude about the way that Israel is going to deal with this burning issue of Hamas. I can't understand any situation where this will not last an incredibly long time with a lot of bloodshed on all sides. And I don't see how there won't be other nations getting pulled into this. Oil prices have gone up quite a lot because of all the events over the last week. And there are so many reasons why those same oil prices could go even higher, and I'm talking dramatically higher, depending how things go. Watch the expansion of this conflict. The world is just such a heavy place right now. It's hard to even be aware of this stuff I know. 
it's just heavy in every regard and there is not much that we can do about it most people can't do anything about it so then you can only talk about what can you do in your situation and i think that is so important that you do watch this stuff keep an eye on it because it's not like watching that somebody got carjacked in oakland or some guy shot his neighbor's dog this matters this you should watch keep an eye on everything going on in the Middle East because it is going to expand and bring in a lot of other nations. This is how wars become world wars. And if you're going to be keeping an eye on this because it's so serious, we'd love to help you do that and give you our interpretation of what things mean. And you can take us up on that offer for free by clicking subscribe on this video or even better, click like on the video because that helps the algorithm spread to more people and we can get the message out there so people start taking this seriously and paying attention to the right things and seeing them in the right way. One click, no cost, and it would mean the world to my team and I. We are working so hard for you guys. If you click the bell, you're going to be alerted when our new video comes out in a couple days. It's going to be a really good one, and that way we can keep this conversation going.